Hello and welcome to Badger Talks Live, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I'm Garrett Halleck, originally from Johns Creek, Georgia, and I'm currently studying supply chain and operations and technology management in the Wisconsin School of Business. I'm also a coordinator for Badger Talks. I'm pleased to introduce Wisconsin Science Festival co-founders, Laura Heisler and George Sugros. Today, they will be sharing an insider's guide on how to participate in this multi-day statewide celebration of science, including how to choose from nearly 200 live, in-person, and recorded on-demand events for all ages taking place in dozens communities across Wisconsin. Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation Director of Programming, Laura Heisler, develops partnerships and creates and manages programs for the Town Center of the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery and for Community Outreach. She earned her PhD in Molecular and Cellular Biology from UW-Madison and has more than a decade of experience working as a researcher and scientific writer in the biotechnology industry. George Sugros has been Executive Director of the Wisconsin Arts Board since 1996, where he works with the Creative Industries, Wisconsin Arts Board members and staff, the governor, and state legislator to create funding programs and services to meet the needs of the people of Wisconsin. He is also a member of the Governor's Council on Tourism and the Cultural Coalition of Wisconsin. George is also chair of the National Creativity Network, past president of the Wisconsin Chiba Incorporated and Film Wisconsin, a board member of Arts Midwest, and the Robert E. Gard Wisconsin Ideal Foundation. Please welcome Laura Heisler and George Sugro. Well, thank you, Garrett. Thank Garrett. you so much. So we thought we'd start out uh, the day um, wishing everybody a good afternoon and saying that we'd love to tell you a, a quick origin story for the Science Festival and then get into some of the insider's guide tips um, that will help you navigate the festival later this week. Um, why is the arts board involved in this would be the first question you might ask. And the answer to that question is that back in 2008, 2009, we were working on a task force on arts and creativity and education. And creativity became a really important part of that conversation. We were lucky enough to get connected to Sir Ken Robinson, whose very famous TED talk is, do schools kill creativity? And so we really delved deeply into imagination, creativity, and innovation. And at the same time, the Arts Board was working on the creation of the National Creativity Network. But while all this was swirling around, um, I had the opportunity to see an article in the New York Times about the World Science Festival. And I thought, isn't this interesting, explaining the arts through the sciences and the sciences through the arts? And would you not know it, but now that this discovery building is going to open on campus, and wouldn't it be great if there was a science festival at that opening? Well, we didn't quite make the opening, but we sent that article around and started asking the question. And of course, it hit fertile ground. It, would, it hit the, the campus, and the campus was very ready to have this conversation. Um, and so that, that is how we started the conversation around the Science Festival. And, and partners were brought in across the campus and from the Cultural Coalition of Wisconsin, which is public television and public radio, humanities, um, the Historical Society, uh, and all of our partners there. So it is about creativity in all its forms. And I think, Laura, you would say curiosity as well. Absolutely. In fact, our motto is curiosity unleashed. So um, if I could, I will go ahead and tell you a little bit about what came from those early conversations. Um, George did um, was very convincing that everything that we hoped for from the Wisconsin Institutes from Discovery Building really aligned with the goals of science festivals in general. And it seemed like such a great opportunity. And so we kicked things off. And I want to start out by saying we haven't been doing this alone at all. Um, we have a number of really important sponsors, many of whom have been on this ride from the very beginning. And the festival wouldn't be possible without them. I also just want to mention that the festival is fully supported by contributions from these amazing sponsors and from grants that we um, we go after and often get in partnership with other festivals around the country. So 
it's really a team effort in terms of the support for the festival. And also, as you'll see, as we go through what the festival is all about, all of the contributions and science and creativity and examples and opportunities that come from everywhere in Wisconsin to make this possible. Um, so the festival did start, as George said, right when the Discovery Building opened. It actually opened in December, so that wouldn't have been such a great time, but we got we were already off the ground in terms of knowing that we wanted to do this and, and who our partners might be. So the first festival began in the fall of 2011. We are actually this year entering our second decade of the Wisconsin Science Festival. So this will be our 11th festival. And um, in brief, the Science Festival is a statewide event that happens over four days every fall. It usually bounces around that third week in October. To be very honest, we time the festival for an away badger game. And we try not to overlap with the World Dairy Expo because those are two big events that sort of take over Madison. Uh, and since we're anchored in Madison, we, we, um, we pay attention to those things. Um, we already know next year's dates, October 20th to the 23rd, if you're interested. So for four days every fall. And we try to get at least one event within 45 minutes of everyone in Wisconsin. Now that um, we're in the world of COVID and we started live streaming, actually things can be in your living room. But in terms of things to go to, we try to get something within 45 minutes, if not closer, of everyone in Wisconsin. The vast majority of things are free. There are some activities in museums that we don't ask them to forego their admission, their normal admissions. So sometimes um, that comes along for the ride, but events that are special for the Science Festival are, are free uh, generally, unless every now and then there's a special food-based activity, but in general, most things, I would say 95% of events are free. Um, so that's the shape of the festival. And you can see that last year, even during COVID, um, we had really amazing participation with over 40,000 people finding a way to participate in those activities. Um, over 100 events in um, something like 35 counties. This year, we're even stronger. We actually have over 300 different event occurrences over the four days at more than 100 different venues in 44 counties, so really blanketing the state. Um, the goals of the festival, as, as we were talking about, are to really connect with people, inspire them through curiosity, help them uh, take a, you know, get a better glimpse at all of the amazing steam that science, technology, engineering, arts, and math uh, taking place in their neighborhoods that they may not realize. Uh, wherever you live in Wisconsin, there are steam professionals, there are steam industries, uh, there are steam events, all kinds of things happening in everyone's backyard. We also want to inspire the next generation of potential scientists or engaged citizens in understanding the world around them and the role that science plays. Um, and we are looking to continue to have that conversation with organizations and help them uh, bring forward whatever it is they're proud of in their STEAM endeavors as part of the festival. We really try to have a, a very all-encompassing, welcoming opportunity for different organizations around the state to be a part of this. And because this is Wisconsin and because this emanated from the University of Wisconsin, it's all about the whole state. It's really the Wisconsin idea. I do want to mention that we are part of a national confederation of science festivals to, that take place all over the US. And from that, we get a lot of great ideas, a great partnerships and opportunities to participate in research and ways of making science festivals even more valuable. So we are part of a bigger world of science festivals, if you will. Um, just to give you a sense of some of the networks that we rely on to make the Science Festival possible, as George was saying, a lot of these stem from some of these early conversations and um, creative organizations that blanket the state, like the Historical Society, like networks of dozens of libraries and museums, uh, Wisconsin Public Radio and PBS Wisconsin, uh, help connect with a lot of different folks in communities around the state with folks on the ground in those communities that are part of those networks. We work closely with the DNR and have activities in a number of state parks, art galleries, and a lot of UW campuses and extension often find their uh, way to participate in the festival and connect with people in their areas. And as you can see, those are a sample of, you can see that those are events, the mushrooms and the bags show you different events taking place this year. We do have a a track of activities this year, all about fungi. And so we've got mushrooms sprouting up all around Wisconsin. So you can see that where those activities are pretty much align with where people live and work in Wisconsin. 
Um, and just to give you a sense, and Sam will give us a lot more of insight into how to use the website and how you can figure out what events there are. But this just gives you a sense of if you were to look for activities in Pewaukee, for example, you might see that they have a number of different activities most days of the festival. And you would click on each of these and you would figure out how to get there, what's gonna happen there, if you need to register, what to expect, maybe even details about parking, what ages the activities are for, et cetera. Um, and sometimes you'll see that some activities look very similar. That might mean that they're offering the same thing every day um, or just something a little slightly different. So this gives you a little sneak peek at how we capture and curate the hundreds of events that take place each year with the festival. Um, I do wanna shout out some of the things that we're particularly excited about this year that you might wanna look at. Like I mentioned, um, we often have a featured strand or track. We try not to say theme because um, we are all encompassing. We invite any, um, any robust science or STEAM activity into the festival that wants to be there. This year, we're shining a special light on fungi. Uh, fungi, what they can do for us, how they might be things to look out for. So we have some events you might, if you're interested in fungi, as many people are. Um, we have panels on Saturday this year, one focused on magic mushrooms and the new research on hallucinogens and a new research institute at UW-Madison that you might like to learn about. And then we have another panel taking a look at the role that fungi play in Wisconsin in terms of our industries, agriculture, tourism, and ecosystems with a number of folks from Extension and the US Forest Service talking about things to look out for. And um, I'll, I'll cut to the chase, look out for that golden oyster mushroom that you see on the tree. That's an emerging hazard in Wisconsin. So you can learn all about those kinds of things and the roles that you can play at that panel. Um, we're also really excited about some of our signature events. Uh, we have something that kicks off the festival every year called Big Ideas for Busy People. It's a series of five minute talks from different UW-Madison researchers. It's the first event um, this year taking place on Thursday evening. It will be live streamed. So if you can't um, make it to Madison to watch it, you can watch it from the comfort of your home and it'll be recorded. So if you aren't able to carve out time on Thursday evening, you can watch it anytime. It's always super popular and it's, a, it's the only time you ever really get to get professors to be quiet on your terms because if they go past five minutes, we gong them off the stage. So that's always really fun for everybody. Um, uh, normally a signature event of the festival is a big expo that we have at the Discovery Building and we usually see people coming from all over Wisconsin and frankly from many different states to get their hands on more than 60 different activities each of four days of the festival. We're not doing that this year because of COVID. We have turned the festival into something virtual that you can click on lots of different activities and do things from the comfort of your home, do science experiments, take tours and more. So we have a virtual expo this year. We also started something last year for COVID that we're gonna continue, which is getting you outside to be a part of a statewide bio blitz, which is kind of a friendly competition to see how many different observations you can make and record about science around you and get others to notice what's going on and maybe comment on what you're seeing or help you understand or identify what it is you're seeing. So that's a really fun self-guided way to be a part of a bigger look at what's going on. And we're capturing all of those data to learn some baseline facts about what goes on in Wisconsin in nature this time of year. And we'll watch that over time and see what the impact of uh, climate change and other impacts on our ecosystems is. And then um, uh, I wanna also call out another event in Madison, something we started last year for COVID that will continue is drive-in movies. And we're featuring science movies. This year we're featuring Fantastic Fungi. And another way to have fun with fungi is a double feature. After that, we have Alice in Wonderland. So all of these events are free, many of them live streamed or things that you can do on your own. Um, so do check them out. And uh, something that we're really excited about that's become a signature of the festival that we couldn't quite do last year, but is back in, in great force this year is Science on the Square. And I'm gonna turn things over to my colleague, Samuel Rooney, who is the mastermind for this event to tell us more about it. All right, thanks, Laura. Yeah, so as you can see, we're very excited about lots of things happening throughout the state. Um, and I wanted to chat a little bit more about Science on the Square, which is taking place downtown Madison on the Friday night of the festival. Uh, so October 22nd this Friday uh, from 5 to 9 p.m. And we're really excited this year to partner with Madison Night Market, which is happening in conjunction uh, with Science on the Square. So um, essentially all of State Street will be uh, filled with Madison Night Market vendors and some really fun 
hands-on science activities for all ages. Um, there are a few other special things happening uh, during Science on the Square. There is a Beasley scavenger hunt that is at a few select locations. Um, we'll be doing something called Stumble into Science, which is where you can just chat with a scientist at a few select locations and grab a beverage with them or some food and just chat about what they do all day as scientists. Um, we also will have plenty of coupons and discounts um, for downtown businesses in supporting their, um, their establishments throughout our event and beyond. And even Ian's Pizza is doing a special slice, a mushroom themed slice of pizza that you can get um, actually all this week, but for sure on on Friday night as part of our event. So we're, um, we're very excited about this one. Um, there'll be some live physics demos on a stage, um, some music from iHeartMedia, uh, lots of fun things happening this Friday, Friday night um, in conjunction with the Madison Night Market. So it will be a very vibrant part of our festival. Um, it's the fourth year of this event. So we're, we're eager to keep making it bigger and better um, each year. And it, it does pose for a very fun atmosphere downtown. Um, yeah, I, I think um, we have a few other um, fun things that I wanted to call out as part of the festival this year. Um, once again, we are doing virtual field trips um, as part of our festival. We'll have 11 different sessions that teachers and schools have registered for. I think we have about 1,300 students from about 20 different schools joining us um, throughout the two days of virtual field trips that we have. Um, offered anything from a nature exploration field trip to um, topics about renewable energy. Uh, it's just a really great uh, opportunity for students to get to interact and ask questions directly to scientists. Um, and schools that don't typically get to travel um, to our building during the festival, they might come from further away or uh, even from a different state, uh, get to participate this way virtually for through our festival. So we're really excited to be able to offer these um, great topics and great field trip opportunities once again. Um, we are also partnering with the Wisconsin Book Festival once again. Uh, they have a fantastic lineup of STEM themed books and authors that are giving talks throughout the course of our festival. Um, some happening in person, some happening virtually. Um, those are all listed on their website as well as ours. Um, and then something new this year that we're very excited about is called Science in a Bag. So there are 35 different libraries throughout the state um, in all different corners of the state that received uh, hands-on kits from us, uh, basically science in a bag that uh, they can explore on their own, uh, that they can pick up at their local libraries and uh, check out. And the science that's inside these bags is it's tied to research that's happening um, not just here on UW Madison's campus, but um, throughout the state as well. So there's um, very interesting topics and things to explore through these science in a bag kits that were um, distributed and can be found uh, at your local library. Um, and those uh, locations are all listed on our website as well. Um, they're easily spotted on our map based on the bag icon that you can see. Um, so, and I wanted to also just chat because there is so much going on uh, there's lots of different events, over 300 event occurrences throughout these next four days of our festival. Um, how do you find what you want to do? It is, uh, there's, like I said, there's a lot happening. Um, so a little bit more about how to navigate our website. So, so first of all, it's uh, wisconsinsciencefest.org or wiscifest.org. Um, and there's three kind of key ways that you can find events happening in a convenient way. Um, so first of all, we have our find an event tab with uh, searchable fields. So you can type in some keywords, you can type in the city that you're looking to attend an event in, um, a specific date, a specific event category, um, a specific age range that you're looking for. So um, the easiest way to find something um, specific is to just go to our find an event tab on our website and type in specifically what you're looking for. Um, we also, um, kind of the second option, um, Laura, there's another um, image there. So there is a map that if you just kind of want to click around and play around and see what's in your area or maybe in a different neck of Wisconsin, you can find our map on our homepage. 
Um, you scroll down a little bit and you can see lots of different mushroom icons. You can see the science in a bag icons that I talked about earlier. Um, and you can just click on those to find the event details that will link you right to the actual event listing on our website. Um, so that's sort of the second way. You can either search your own key terms or you can find out on our map. And if you're just curious to know what types of categories or certain type uh, or certain themes of event activities that we have going on, there's sort of a, a, a searchable um, grouping of different types of uh, activities and categories. So Laura, there's another just image on our homepage. We have these searchable um, icons that lead you to uh, like, for example, all activities that are related to astronomy or all activities that are related to chemistry. So you can scroll down on our homepage to find these icons and it'll do a search for you. So real simple. Um, and, and really, I would stress that there is something for all ages, all um, activity levels. Um, there's indoor events, there's outdoor events, there's hybrid events. So really something for everyone during our festival, which is something that we are, are proud to be able to produce once again this year. Um, so yeah, and we are, um, I wanted to share a, a brief demo of some of the kits that are happening uh, throughout the state in our Science in a Bag kits. Um, so we have a, a short little clip here that kind of explains a little bit more about what Science in a Bag is all about and highlights one of the kits that is in uh, some of those kits that were distributed throughout the state. So uh, enjoy. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? I just want to share a little bit with you guys today about the Wisconsin Science Festival. At your local libraries, as we are sitting in front of one now, we are sharing amongst 35 different libraries some kits that we'll be having in a bag. So when you go to your local library, you'll see for the Science, Science Festival, we'll have some different type of kits that you can pull out and be able to inter, uh, introduce with your family. Good for all ages, from the little ones all the way through high school, and even to work with their parents. Make sure you're being safe, and thanks for participating in the Wisconsin Science Festival. Okay, you've got your science in a bag. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Some of those kits you might want to explore right away. One of those is really cool uh, from the Materials Research Science and Engineering Center in partnership with a graduate student from physics and also an artist, Aiden Gardell. Put together some amazing opportunities through this video and guided structure to help you investigate light and create art through investigation of light. So light's moving around in all sorts of different pathways, but it moves in a wave. So there's waves going in different ways. That can be difficult to control. So what you have with the little filters are a way to make the light move together in the same pathway. So that's cool. That's called the polarizer. And you have a couple of polarizers that you can turn, twist, and manipulate to see how light passes through one and moves in the same direction. And then what happens if it passes through another? Two polarizers and you can twist and turn and see some of the patterns that develop based on what you investigate. More than that, you can take that two polarizers and you can create kind of a sandwich. So in between, you can start to put some cellophane in there and you'll see that right here. And you can stack stuff in between and put your cellophane in there. You can twist, turn, anything that really is able to pass light through pretty easily. Something that's mostly transparent will work well. And again, you can manipulate, you can cut shapes, you can stack those shapes up and start to develop some unique things that only you create as part of Science in a Bag at this year's festival. Enjoy your explorations. Can't wait to hear how your stories go and inspire others to do more of the same. All right, do science, have fun, enjoy. So uh, yeah, we were um, very excited to be able to send those science in a bag kits out throughout the state. So we encourage you to go 
um, check them out at your uh, local libraries and um, for sure check out wisconsinsciencefest.org to find all the um, events that you might be interested in attending over the next four days. Um, and then something I didn't mention is that uh, we are excited to have Beasley, our um, science festival honeybee mascot, flying around uh, throughout the state. Uh, and you might spot some photos of her on our website as well. And I think I have a special guest here today as well who wanted to stop by and say hi. Uh, she's very busy this week. Um, this is Beasley, our mascot. And she, uh, you might spot her downtown at Science on the Square or if you attend our drive-in movies at the Mallard Stadium. She's a very friendly bee and loves to see everybody engaging in our STEAM activities throughout the four days of the festival. So thanks Beasley for stopping by. <laughs> Wow, great job. Uh, and, and hello, Beasley. Do, is Beasley taking autographs when we see her or? <laughs> she loves to take photos. She's very popular <laughs> with selfies. So yes, if you spot her, feel free to track her down and get a photo. Fantastic. Well, uh, hello everybody. Fran Paleo Moyer, Badger Talks producer. Uh, we have the Wisconsin Science Festival team with us today and boy, we're really impressed with all of the work that you all have done to produce so many events around the state. 60, 64% outside of Dane County. That is wonderful. And I'm really impressed with how you were able to take existing events and venues like the Madison Night Market and uh, the Mallards Duck Pond and then integrate science into these everyday happenings, including libraries and schools. So bravo, great job, everyone. So can you tell us a little bit about if you want to be a host? So there are libraries and other groups hosting events. How do you go about becoming a host of an event for the Science Festival? Yeah, I, I can take that question. Um, so right now we're pretty set with um, event hosts. So uh, we're excited to just promote what we have right now, but then we're already gearing up for next year's festival, which Laura mentioned the dates that October 20th through the 23rd. Um, and shortly after this year's festival, we will put our um, host an event interest form on our website. So just going to host an event, uh, the host an event tab on wisconsinsciencefest.org will lead you to a form to fill out. And that basically lets us know that you're interested and we'll keep you up to date on the requirements as we get closer to um, our festival opening up for registration next year. And Really, yeah, we're excited to bring in all different types of organizations um, hosting uh, events related to science, technology, engineering, art, or math, um, and really promoting the Wisconsin idea through the Wisconsin Science Festival. So, yeah. Great. And are you also looking for volunteers still for this year, or is that something maybe people can plan for for next year as well? I would definitely say plan for next year. Mark your calendars on, uh, on all fronts, whether you're participating or volunteering or hosting. Um, we are doing pretty great with volunteers. Uh, you'll see a lot of our um, fantastic discovery volunteers downtown at the Science on the, on the Square event, uh, representing the Wisconsin Science Festival in their um, nice pink volunteer t-shirts this year. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity to volunteer if you are interested in promoting uh, science outreach. It sounds like you have a nice mix of virtual events and in-person events, which is fantastic. Is that new as a result of COVID or were you doing uh, virtual events before? And is that something you think will continue uh, like from now on, uh, regardless of the situation with the pandemic? I'll maybe respond to that and then Sam, feel free to join in. Um, it is definitely new as a result of COVID. We were really all about getting folks to come together and go to a STEAM venue or come to um, a, a venue that was promoting a, some kind of science activity, even if it's a non-STEAM venue like a state park and really get out there in person. Um, and we always would record anything that was amenable to being recorded like a lecture or a talk if we could. Um, these were definitely some innovations in response to COVID. And we were pleased last year actually that by doing this, by making some events uh, live streamed, recording everything, and then having sort of self-guided activities that people could do safely, like the bio blitz or like going to a drive-in movie, we actually increased participation in festival activities by about a third during COVID. So what we learned from that is that people like to be able to do things sort of on demand, 
um, on their own speed and in their own time. And so that's something we wanna continue because our goal for the festival is to connect as many people. I secretly would love it if every single person in Wisconsin knew when it was science festival time, put it on their calendars and made their plan using our website to figure out how they were gonna engage with all this amazing um, science activity. So I don't think we're gonna let those things go. Um, the, the brilliant idea that Sam helped lead with science in a bag is something that I think we hope to continue as a way of reaching more interested folks than can maybe get to activities. So um, we're just looking to, to grow our reach. And so we're gonna keep all the things that work and things that aren't well attended, we'll probably question whether or not we should do them maybe differently and maybe adopt some of these practices. Wonderful. And George, uh, hearkening back to that TED talk that inspired you so long ago for the science festival, can I ask the question of you and the rest of the team, what are you most excited about or what are you most proud about uh, this year, most proud of? Yeah, it's a great question, Fran. Um, first and foremost, the fact that this is in fact a Wisconsin science festival. You know, when you start something in Madison, you might have the, the problem of it being only Madison focused. But from the beginning, this was a Wisconsin science festival and using the sesquicentennial model and the Badger State Games model, it was an uh, opportunity to spread things out across the state by having such a low barrier of entry. If you have an event and it's coming during this time, and it's science related or STEAM related in this instance, let's, let's hook up, let's get this together, let's promote it together, let's make this something really big. And it's become that. And it, it's a testament to the team that produces the festival and the advisors that advise the festival, the hosts and the sponsors as well. The other thing I'll say, of course, I'm very proud of the fact that the arts are very involved in the festival because I think it's really important that we can explain how the arts work through the sciences and vice versa, um, because that helps us not only learn something, but inspire our curiosity to learn more. So that would be, those would be my two answers. Thank you. And I'll just pipe in and say, um, as someone who is trained as a scientist, I'm particularly excited about the ways that the festival provides opportunities for scientists, whether they're beginning scientists, like students starting their career or, senior faculty who've been doing research for 40 years, it gives them a, a straightforward way to connect with the public that in most cases supports their work and really helps them appreciate the value of connecting with public audiences and grounding their work in public interest. And um, also having fun connecting with the public, then that leads to their participation in more things throughout the year. And we see this um, throughout the year, we have a lot of different programs that we support all year, and we rely on the festival as a way of um, helping faculty and scientists and staff and students connect with um, opportunities to reach out to the public and bring their science to more people who can benefit from and, and interrogate what they're doing. So I'm very proud of the number of scientists that get connected all around Wisconsin and promoting their science. Yeah, and I think I would I would chime in um, in terms of what I'm I'm most excited about for the festival this year is probably um, our Friday night Science on the Square event. Um, it's been fun watching that event grow from four years ago into what it's uh, become for this year and pairing with the Madison Night Market. So I'm really excited about um, seeing the the sort of vibrant downtown atmosphere and really connecting with the community where they're at. Uh, which is kind of just uh, embodies what we're trying to do with the Wisconsin Science Festival in one event. So I think, yeah, the, the engagements that we get to see downtown uh, around some of our activities and kind of those aha moments and the surprising, oh, I didn't know that about mushrooms or I didn't, uh, I didn't plan on doing science tonight, but look at me go. So I think that's what I'm most excited to see um, this year's festival. Great. Well, thank you, Science Festival team, and congratulations again. We hope very much that everybody will engage uh, now on events that are already out there uh, available for people to engage, and then starting on Thursday through the weekend. I know I have my list of events mm -hmm. to attend. So thanks so much. Thank you. So please tune in. We're going to shift our focus uh, from the Science Festival, which was so much fun talking to Ann Pringle about all of her fungi and philosophers, Larry Shapiro and Steve Nadler, uh, giving a great glimpse into the Science Festival. We're going to shift our attention in November 
to the good work of UW faculty and staff around the state with the University Alliance. And we're gonna be starting in Brown County. So join us on Tuesday, November 2nd at noon. We're gonna be talking to Mike Cheadle, who's a senior design program coordinator in mechanical engineering. And we're gonna be meeting uh, a student design team called the Blue Green Buster. Uh, and they are a group of mechanical engineering students that are developing a prototype to extract blue green algae from the Fox River in Brown County. Uh, so please tune in for that and we'll be focusing on other University Alliance projects around the state in November. Please visit us at badgertalks.wist.edu. You can get more details about those upcoming events. You can sign up for our email list. Uh, please consider a donation to Badger Talks. We are grant funded. And you can also search the roster of over 400 UW experts who've signed up to generously donate their time to give talks around the state uh, in communities like yours. Also check out the Badger Talks podcast. Uh, there is a link on our webpage as well. And uh, I know Laura and George actually spoke with Ben as well, giving a little glimpse into the science festival there too. We'll look forward to seeing you all on November 2nd. Thanks for tuning in.